Welcome to another episode of Financial 15, the show where Kevin and I try to provide some knowledge, something you can use to improve your situation, cover all that in 15 minutes or less. And today we're talking RRSPs, specifically mm-hmm. five pitfalls you're going to want to avoid if you make an RSP contribution. Lots of good information. You want to stick around. Yes, it's that time of year again. Our RSP season, the calendar is flipped. January started, so straight now, right through to the beginning of March, is this is what's the big concentration. And again, you make your RSP contributions, but it's not only that, there are also people that want to withdraw for certain reasons. We want to talk about the avoidance of those RSPs today. Remember, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, see what you can. There's tons of videos out there, not only on this topic, but a variety of others that we've talked about. If you don't do that one, also go to our website at beckeror.com. You get a listing there and things to look at, or you can like us on Facebook. But today what we're dealing with is avoiding five RRSP pitfalls. A lot of people will put money in. They don't look at odds and ends or how it's done or what else can go on or if they're withdrawing. Clint, why don't we start this off? What are some of these pitfalls we have to avoid? Yeah, that's what i right. And there's lots of nuances when it comes to RRSPs. And that's what's really going to, I think, come to the forefront here as we go through these five different pitfalls. The first pitfall is if someone makes a contribution in kind, you don't have to put new cash in an RSP. If you have an existing investment, you can slide that investment into the RSP. You can get the deduction. The trouble you can run into if you have an unrealized loss on that investment, you probably don't want to contribute in kind to the RSP. You don't want to contribute your losers in kind. And I'll pull up an example here, Kevin, so you can really let people understand the, the value of this and why you might want to avoid it. Walk us through this here. We got an example of an unrealized loss and the RSP. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the government seems to have you coming and going. I mean, you got to claim one, you can't claim the other, that sort of scenario. They always make sure it's in their advantage, just like the house in Vegas. But yeah, let's do an example of this. So under our assumption here, Alvin owns a thousand shares of ABC Core. He paid 10 for it. Now it's worth eight. So theoretically speaking, that if he sells it today, he's got an unreal or he's got an at at present, he's got an unrealized capital loss of 2000. If he sells it, he gets a realized capital loss. But let's assume that Alvin wants to take this ABC core and he wants to donate it in kind and contribute it to his RRSP. Now, if he does that, he does get the $8,000 credit that's going to go in. It's an $8,000 RSP contribution, but that's still a $2,000 loss from what it was originally done. He will not get that capital loss deduction. The government does not deem you to have sold it if you put it in your RSP from a non-registered account. Very important to know. Whereas if he actually does sell it, realizes the loss, he will have that $2,000 loss. He can then take that cash and contribute it into his RRSP. So he still gets the $8,000 that way, but he does get to realize the loss. And let's remember that all applies based on superficial loss rules. Now, again, we won't go too far into this. We've done an entire video on superficial loss, which you can take a look at on the website or go onto the YouTube channel. But again, that's an important point to realize is noting that if you just put it in in kind and you have a loss, government's not going to give it to you, are they? Yeah, so that capital loss is advantageous. So you can use it to write off against further capital gains to get a nice savings there. So you want to use that capital loss, get the tax advantage of the capital loss. But if you contribute in kind to your RSP, government doesn't give it to you. So that's something to be aware of. And as you mentioned, we'll link to the video we did on tax loss selling, which goes over that superficial loss rule. Because that's important. You got to make sure you follow those rules. Otherwise, you might not get the loss in that case either. But that's tip number one contributing losers yes. in kind. Be very care- careful about how you do that. Tip number two here is claiming the deduction in the wrong year. And this is a nuanced item. You don't have to claim your RSP deduction the year in which you make the RRSP contribution. You can make an RSP contribution this year, but you can deduct it from your income three years from now. You don't have to do it right away. And that can trip some people up. And a good example, let's say you're you're in school, your income's low, you're focusing on your studies, and you get an inheritance. You get a lump sum of money. You put it in the RSP because you want to get that money invested. You want to get it working for you right away, but you don't need the RSP contribution now because your income is low. However, after you graduate, your income goes up because you have a better job. That would be the time to use the contribution, to actually use the deduction. You can put the money in today, get it invested, and then actually wait to use the deduction. So ideally, use the deduction in the higher income year. You don't have to use it right away. And that's really the whole premise of this tip is you can separate when you make put the money in the account and when you actually use the tax deduction. They don't have to be in the same year. You can separate those decisions. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's an important point to really realize. Again, if you've, if you've had tons of RSP room that you've gathered over a number of years because you haven't made any contributions, and then you figure, well, I'll do the whole lump sum now and I'll put it all in. But, you know, if I'm in a small tax bracket, I may not get the deduction I need. I mean, it may not be as beneficial as if I wait a number of years down the road and put it through that way. So, yeah, claiming the deduction in the wrong year is definitely something that you have to look at or whether or not you want to put everything in at once. Those are big points to look. Yeah, number three here, going through five pitfalls to avoid for our RSPs. Number three is withdrawing the money, Kevin. Uh, I mean, wow. we're saying here to pay down debt, but ideally, just in general, you want to be careful when you withdraw money from an RRSP. Yeah, you really do. And that, that's a big factor. I mean, a lot of times what people don't realize is that when you take money out of an RSP, there is tax taken off the top that has to go to the government. It's on a sliding scale, too. If you take a small amount out, they take 10%. If you take a larger amount out, they're taking 30% tax off the top. So, I mean, if you've got debt you're looking to pay down that's at 3 or 4% in interest, and you take a 30% tax cut off the top from your RSP to withdraw it, that's a huge area of money that you've just lost one way. You're better off paying it on the other side. That's one of the things that you have to look at is if I'm paying down debt, am I paying more in taxes to get the money out, be able to pay that debt down, or... Am I going to be better for better for it on the other side? The other factor that I guess you have to consider is, you know, what am I taking out in that room that I'm going to lose? Is it not? Yeah, absolutely. So the RSP room doesn't come back. So if you put money in an RSP and then you take it out, you don't get the room back. It's a kind of a one and done. Once you've used it, that's it. So if you put a big chunk in an RSP, then down the road, you take it out to pay off debt. Well, you're not going to get that contribution room back. And as you mentioned, you're going to pay a whole bunch of tax once you take it out of the account. So it might not be worth it even if you get some interest savings on the debt. We did a whole video on, on investing versus paying down debt and some things to consider. We'll link to that video. But the key there is when to make that decision is before you put the money in the investment yes. account. You don't put the money in and then decide later to pay off the debt. You make that decision <laughs> up front and it'll save you a whole bunch of headache. Once it's in the account, the decision is already made. And uh, as you talked about, there's some consequences of trying to undo that. So make the decision up front and then kind of follow through with your plan after that. Number four, again, five pitfalls for RSPs. We're trying to avoid these. Number four on that list, not updating the beneficiaries. You go through a life event, particularly a marital breakdown, you're no longer with your significant other, you definitely want to update the beneficiary. Uh, I can't think of many people that after they get divorced, they want their money to go back to their ex-partner. And if you don't update no. the beneficiary, that is a very real possibility. <laughs> So you got to make sure you're on top of the beneficiaries and you have the right person listed on the account. Otherwise, uh, your, your estate could be in for quite a surprise. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, th this is not pension money where theoretically two thirds go to your spouse. So if you may be married or anything else, the new spouse will get the money. That seems to be the way things work. If you have an RSP and you still left the old spouse on it, and the new spouse doesn't know the old spouse is going to get the money. And trust me, neither one of these parties will be happy. You don't have to worry about it. You're not there, but I'm sure that the new spouse is definitely going to be in, in contention with what's going on. But yeah, I mean, this could be besides spousal. I mean, maybe you've had it designated to kids or you've designated it to somebody else that's a family member and something's falling apart. Always remember that, you know, check the beneficiaries every now and then. Make sure that it's all a aligned to what you want, because tons of times people sit there and a situation changes. They never think of updating their beneficiaries. And it's very important that you know who's on there, especially as you start to get up in advanced years. So that yeah. takes care of four, sort of four, but we also right. have five, don't we? <laughs> we got the number five here, or saving the best for last, but it's having to do with withdrawing from a spousal RSP early. Now, this gets a little complicated because special mm -hmm. rules with spousal RSPs, but we'll go through an example of exactly how that could apply, how that could work. So I'll do the first part here, Kevin. Sure. The spousal RSP. So in our example, we got a couple of years, or I should mention we have two people, with Taylor and Jerry, they're married. Taylor is making spousal RSP contributions for Jerry. Taylor does that for 2019, 20, 21, 2022. You can see the years listed on the slide. And with a spousal contribution, Taylor puts the money in. They get the tax deduction. They're getting the benefit, but then the money goes to Jerry. So when Jerry takes it out in retirement, Jerry will actually be the one claiming the income. Now, this makes a lot of sense if the spouses yep. have different levels of income. So if Taylor has the higher income, well, of course, they want the tax deduction. And then if Jerry's in a lower income bracket, well, that'd make more sense for them to pay the tax because they're going to pay the tax at a lower rate. So it's a way you can do a bit of income splitting with that spousal RSP. But there's a three-year rule you have to be very cautious of. Otherwise, it can throw a big wrench in those plans. What's the three-year rule? 
Yeah, basically, in in regard to your RSP, if you're contributing to it, you can withdraw anytime you want. The tax situation yeah. comes back to you. But in the spousal scenario, they want to make sure that you're not just doing this as a tax break completely, but that you're also using it for a retirement plan scenario. So by doing that, the three-year rule comes in basically that if you've contributed money this year, say now, not only this year, but the two following tax years, if money is taken out of that RSP, that income that's drawn back in does not go to the spouse whose name it's in. It goes back to the contributor. So in this case, if Taylor made the contributions to Jerry and two years down the road, Jerry takes the money out, the money she takes out or he takes out is going to go back to Taylor as income for him for that year or for her that year, depending on how we want to play it. But yeah, I mean, that's basically the three-year rule. It's the year you contribute plus two following years from there that we have to worry about. So our example above, I mean, Again, we can get into the fact of how much is taken out. I mean, the number of withdrawal money, that, that that's going to vary depending on what it is. But, you know, years 19 and years 20 are probably pretty good for 2023. That sort of scenario. But the three-year rule is something you do definitely have to be worried of or at least cognizant of in regard to when you want to withdraw money. Yeah, absolutely. So in our example, uh, in 2022, if that's the last contribution, well, uh, the year of contribution plus the next two. So that means 2022, 2023, 2024. If uh, Jeremy made a withdrawal 2024 or earlier, there could be some income attribution and that Taylor could still have to pay the tax on that. Now, there's some nuance about the details, exactly how the formula works, but that's the general idea about the three-year rule. And you want to be very cautious about that because if pitfall to avoid with RSPs is withdrawing from that spousal RSP early and having to deal with the income attribution that follows. So we've covered five quick tips there, all about our RSPs. If you have a question for us on RSPs or any other topic, please reach out. We're happy to help out. You can see it on the bottom of the slide there, bottom of the screen, chat with Clinton and Kevin.com. We'd love to hear from you. You go to the website, fill in the form, and then we'll answer whatever question you might have. Chat with Clinton and Kevin.com. Any parting words for folks, Kevin? No, I think you've covered it very well. We've avoided these five RSP fitball, pitfalls, should I say, and we'll see what other RSP Topics we can deal with for the rest of the coming RSP season. <laughs> that sounds good. Lots to come. You want to stay tuned. Take care.